An intact cup on the table is a state of high order, but a broken cup on the floor is a disordered state. One can therefore go from the whole cup on the table in the past to the broken cup on the floor in the future, but not the other way around. The increase of disorder or entropy with time is one example of what is called an arrow of time. Something which gives a direction to time and distinguishes the past from the future. There are at least three different arrows of time. First, there is the thermodynamic arrow of time. The direction of time in which disorder, or entropy, increases. Second, there is the psychological arrow of time. This is the direction in which we feel time passes. The direction of time in which we remember the past, but not the future. Third, there is the cosmological arrow of time. This is the direction of time in which the universe is expanding rather than contracting. I shall argue that the psychological arrow is determined by the thermodynamic arrow and that these two arrows always point in the same direction. If one makes the no-boundary assumption for the universe, they are related to the cosmological arrow of time, though they may not point in the same direction. However, I shall argue that it is only when they agree with the cosmological arrow that there will be intelligent beings who can ask the question, why does disorder increase in the same direction of time as that in which the universe expands. I shall talk first about the thermodynamic arrow of time. The second law of thermodynamics is based on the fact that there are many more disordered states than there are ordered ones. For example, consider the pieces of a jigsaw in a box. There is one, and only one, arrangement in which the pieces make a complete picture. On the other hand, there are a very large number of arrangements in which the pieces are disordered and don't make a picture. Suppose a system starts out in one of the small number of ordered states. As time goes by, the system will evolve according to the laws of physics, and its state will change. At a later time, there is a high probability that it will be in a more disordered state, simply because there are so many more disordered states. Thus disorder will tend to increase with time if the system obeys an initial condition of high order. Suppose that pieces of the jigsaw start off in the ordered arrangement in which they form a picture. If you shake the box, the pieces will take up another arrangement. <laughs> this will probably be a disordered arrangement, 
in which the pieces don't form a proper picture, simply because there are so many more disordered arrangements. Some groups of pieces may still form parts of the picture, but the more you shake the box, the more likely it is that these groups will get broken up. <laughs> the pieces will take up a completely jumbled state, in which they don't form any sort of picture. Thus, the disorder of the pieces will probably increase with time if they obey the initial condition that they start in a state of high order. Suppose, however, that God decided that the universe should finish up at late times in a state of high order but that it didn't matter what state it started in. Then, at early times, the universe would probably be in a disordered state, and disorder would decrease with time. You would have broken cups gathering themselves together and jumping back on the table. However, any human beings who were observing the cups would be living in a universe in which disorder decreased with time. I shall argue that such beings would have a psychological arrow of time that was backwards. That is, they would remember events at late times and not remember events at early times. It is rather difficult to talk about human memory because we don't know how the brain works in detail. We do, however, know all about how computer memories work. I shall therefore discuss the psychological arrow of time for computers. I think it is reasonable to assume that the arrow for computers is the same as that for humans. If it were not, one could make a killing on the stock exchange by having a computer that would remember tomorrow's prices. <laughs> a computer memory is basically some device which can be in either one of two states. An example would be a superconducting loop of wire. If there is an electric current flowing in the loop, it will continue to flow because there is no resistance. On the other hand, if there is no current, the loop will continue without a current. One can label the two states of the memory, one and zero. Before an item is recorded in the memory, the memory is in a disordered state with equal probabilities for one and zero. After the memory interacts with the system to be remembered, it will definitely be in one state or the other according to the state of the system. Thus, the memory passes from a disordered state to an ordered one. However, in order to make sure that the memory is in the right state, it is necessary to use a certain amount of energy. This energy is dissipated as heat and increases the amount of disorder in the universe. One can show that this increase of disorder is greater than the increase in the order of the memory.